Hey y'all, what it do? What's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. Now look, let me tell y'all something. Y'all ain't sh okay because y'all didn't tell me that Love After Life Lockup was back on. Y'all know that's my god dang show. Love After Lockup, the best trash TV out there. Y'all know your girl over here on this channel, Love After Lockup, be on you know, it be on the roster. Now, I'm a couple episodes behind. Um, it's like three, four episodes in, so I'm not going to be able to do those. But uh, luckily, we're on episode four, so we're just going to start right there. And, um, you know, not too much has happened, but enough has also happened to let me know that you most out here is dumb. Just dumb, you know? But we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it. So if you're new to my channel, I appreciate you for tuning in. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it is free 99 um, and everybody else who's already part of the Juice Box crew, you already know what's up. Hit that thumbs up button, drop down in the comments, let me know that you stop by. And everybody who's a fan of Love After Lockup, Love During Lockup, Life After Lockup, the whole scene, the whole franchise, drop down in the comments, okay? And tell me what you thought about the episode. So let's go ahead and get into everything, all right? So we have these couples. Let's start off with Melissa and Louie. First thing about Melissa, she's living in the you know, a high school fairy tale fantasy delusion that she's created in her head. All she keeps talking about is, oh, back then when Louis was the guy, everybody wanted to fuck Louis. You know, Louis was the bad boy. Like, that's all she keeps talking about. Like, and then she's like, oh, yeah, when I show up to the reunion with Louis, because Louis was the hot bad boy back then that all the girls wanted. So in her mind, it's like, I'm going to get a man had nanny boo boo. But girl, you forgetting the fact that this man turned into a whole crackhead and just got out of prison. Like, you might want to consider that. So, the thing about Louis, though, is he got the typical helicopter mom, especially an Italian family. The boys can do no wrong. And Donna is on Melissa's ears, okay? You're not going to take her son. So they were supposed to stay tonight. They didn't. They snuck out. And she was like, well, you know what? You want to treat us like we kids? Guess what, Donna? We're going to act like kids. And we're going to sneak out while you sleep after your uh, your ambient and kicked in. So they head out, go to the hotel. And y'all know what every, it's on every man's mind when he gets out of the penitentiary is when he going to get some of that nook nook. Um, and that's all he's thinking about. And they in the car talking about, oh, we going to use protection or not. And uh, Melissa was like, yeah, we talked about kids and, you know, we made the decision, you know, not to do it. I said, oh, thank you, Lord, because you help us and having kids. The minute these dudes got out of prison, something, something wrong with y'all. Y'all are dense. Um, but she was like, yeah, we're not going to do it. But listen to his mom, Donna, say, oh, y'all ain't having no kids. She's basically it's making her want to do it, girl. So they get to the hotel and, you know, bingo bongo, they, um, you know, do to do. He lasts minutes. Y'all know these dudes got out of prison think they're going to last. No, you ain't had no nookie, um, you know, for however long you've been there. For him, it's been, what, 17 years? I mean, we know of. He could have been in prison getting that bunchy cat. <laughs> he could have been in prison getting that bunchy cat because you know they got the do boys in there, Okay. You might not got no nookie, okay, but you got pussy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he did the do. The mama called the next morning, blowing his phone, talking about, where'd you go? You're sneaking out. There's an unmarked car. I, th I think she was lying. She was lying. She was lying, trying to, trying to basically, like, make him feel guilty for sneaking out. You were supposed to be there this morning. He's like, ma'am, I got 48 hours. Like, I, I got time to show up. And you need to tell me all the information. Like, she, I get it, mama, that's your son. But he's 41. He's 41. He's a little behind the gate, though, in, on the, you know, the, the building part of his life. And you keep trying to do everything for him and, and helicopter parent him and all that type of stuff. Like, you got to let him go, big mama. So Melissa and him, they go on the way to the, um, to meet his P.O., He's basically going to ask about getting transferred to New Jersey because being in Georgia is like a huge trigger for him, which I can understand. He's like, be at my mom's house. I remember, you know, calling up the dope man, you know, tell him to bring that yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's just, I, it's a trigger for him. And then obviously being around his mom is going to make him want to use more. Sorry, Donna, you're a headache. So while he's inside, 
guess who whoop up? <laughs> with a wooden spoon knocking on the window, talking about, let me in. And it's Donna with this spoon talking about, what are you doing? Um, and um, she was like, girl, you out here making a scene. Like, get your ass in the car. So they sitting down. And every time Melissa be trying to say stuff, she be like, yeah, 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 butt out, buttercup. And so Melissa was like, do you think if my dad would talk to you, like, you let him talk to you like that? He was like, if, if it was your dad, I'd like, you know, just listen. So she's like, that's what you expected me to do? Just sit back and let your mama talk to me like that? And Don is definitely one of those women that you got to check immediately. Because she going to keep pushing the boundaries and feel like she going to be able to get away talking to you a certain way. You got to check that and if that's you right in the bud. So he come out and basically we're left on a cliffhanger on whether he is going to be able to go to Jersey or not. Now she asked Miss Donna if she would move to Jersey. I guess trying to see, you know, if we go to Jersey, your mama can't follow. Your mama need to live her own life instead of trying to uh, parole yours because that is not the way to go. Um, so yeah, like we said, we're going to have to wait till next episode to see if Louie's going to be able to make it to Jersey or not. And Melissa, you need to get out of your head with the delusion of like, oh my God, Louie. You know, I guess she started her her cycle from uh, hooking up with him. And she's like, oh my God, it's like, you know, me losing my virginity to him. You know, because back in the day, I really, you know, all the girls wanted to lose their virginity to Louie. And it's like, the delusions people come up with in their head with these inmates, I just be so lost. Um, So moving on. A uh, quick little couple. We have Joy and Red. Joy, I love. I, I feel so bad for her because I can just see why she does the things she does. She's clearly very insecure, um, and I just feel bad. And that girl breaking down every ten minutes, crying like, "Girl, you got a lot of shit you need to work out before trying to even pick up and help an inmate." Because he got a lot of shit. He gonna have to work out himself, being getting out of prison and everything. Like. I think a lot of women in particular forget that that transition from out of prison to the real world is a hell of a transition. They are going from literally having everything done for them to now trying to figure out how to make money, paying bills, you know, this new sense of technology, being out in the world and having, you know, all the, the women in the playground that they might want to get at, you know? Um, it's very... It's very concerning. And then not only that, so she, Joy, ends up going to a lawyer basically trying to get Red to be able to adopt her son's sway, I guess. And so the lawyer was like, well, it's not that easy. Like, they're going to want to see, firstly, like, maybe you guys get married, him actually being in the child's life, you know, for a few years so that he's really, like, fit to adopt him. Um, But he was like, but also they want to know about the parent, like, the father, so what's going on with him? And she was like, well, you know, it, it, it could be one of three guys. And she had to tell her sister that. She said, oh, this is like, wait a minute, I thought you only told me about one. And she was like, you know, it basically what happened was he only had three, four years. He got in a fight and it basically made him like get add more time. They added more time. So... She was lonely, horny, upset. So she decided that she was going to try to fill the void. And ding dong, baby. Just shout out to Bernie Mac, RIP Bernie Mac. Ding dong, baby. <laughs> and now we got this baby here. And so she's crying. She's like, you know, it's just embarrassing. Like, I get a girl. Like, and then she didn't, the man don't even know. The, the actual baby's father don't even know that Sway's here. So that's a whole situation. And it's like, girl. You got three men that you can try to figure out who the baby father is. And I do think like that should be like, you should really consider that. I don't know why she's not considering that. Maybe out of embarrassment, maybe out of probably that man got, got a woman and you was messing with a nigga that got a woman. Cause that's what it's given as well too. Um, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards that. I'm actually leaning towards that actually. Like she messed with it, that got somebody. Or she's like, she's at least kept up with the, the possibilities of these dudes and on the social media and see she and she see that they got stuff going on and probably ain't trying to blow that spot up. Uh, Cause she'll immediately look like the homewrecker, unfortunately, when it's him. 
But nonetheless, the lawyer's like, you might want to wait on that too because if something happened, you gave him legal rights to the child. Like he could actually take the kid from you. And so she don't want to have that happen either. So, you know, they leave the lawyer's office and the sister's like, you know, what are you going to do? Like, you can just take your time, think on it. But, you know, you never told me about it being, you know, po different possibilities of who the dad was. And she was like, you know, I was just embarrassed and everything. And, you know, I just know Red's going to be a good father. Everything's going to be okay. And I'm just so thankful that, you know, he took me back after me cheating on him. And the sister is thinking exactly what I'm thinking, like, I, Joy is very clearly allowing this cheatation to like boggle her down to settling with this man. Like you're so worried about him taking you that you're not even realize like you're taking on a lot as well. Like, oh, you had, yes, you had this baby. And as long as he, if he agreed, then that cheatation cannot be thrown in your face because he agreed to take you back. So you got to stop beating yourself up over that. First of all, but she's so insecure that she sees it just as another reason why a man won't want her and why Red won't take her. So, you know, it could be a thing of like, yeah, you know, he he knows you cheated. But like the sister said, that don't give him like any latter part of feeling like, well, I can still use her. I can still get something out of her. Like now she feels in debt to me. So, you know, she go have my life set up for me when I get out. And he could be holding that cheatation over her as well. Like, girl, remember I took you and your son after everything you did to me. And she's always going to allow that to be like the Achilles heel of their relationship because she feels shitty about it. Like, Joy, I need you to go sit on somebody's couch because the insecurities are screaming. So they dropped the son off and now she can already take off on a flight to go um, get red because he's getting out. So we're going to see how that plays out, y'all. But as of right now, Joy, I just really need you to work on yourself, honey, and stop trying to fill, you know, these voids that you have in yourself with men because that's not going that's not going to fix it at all. Um, so moving on, we have Mikey and Chelsea. I actually like Mikey and Chelsea, y'all. Like drop it in the comments. Like what do y'all feel about them? I like Mikey and Chelsea. So, I love the fact that you are in sign language like you know, that shows level of dedication. It's some people who will not even learn another language for somebody that they're with. So, I, as of right now, what I'm seeing with Mikey and Chelsea, of all the couples, they're the ones I'm, like, least concerned about. I see the most potential. Um, So, he's out, and unfortunately, his mother passed away only a few weeks before he got out. And I know, like, he was crying. Like, I know that has to be hard because... When you're in jail, you're not the only person in jail. Like, your family's in there. Even though they're on the outside, they're dealing with the ramifications of that as well. So, um, you know, he's on the way to the house. And, you know, he's just nervous because the last time he saw his sisters, he was actually getting arrested in front of them, you know. So, it's going to be kind of, like, overwhelming seeing them. And Chelsea knows them because she actually went down to the mom's funeral when she passed. And that's like super, like that was super important to Mikey. He was like, you know, I know I have a good woman. Like she did these things, you know, for me. So I like, I love her for that. So they get to the house. Of course, it's emotional. Um, of course, super sad. They go in the room and, you know, they have things laid out for him. And he kind of brought up the idea of, you know, staying the night. And she kind of was like, like, I don't, I don't know about all that. Uh, not only did he lose his mom, but she lost her mom as well, y'all. So they're both like in a grieving stage. Now, of course, for him, it would be weird, but it's not totally uncomfortable because it's his, it's his mom's house. It's his house. You know, it could give him a chance, you know, to deal with the grieving. But for her, it's like, I don't want to be in no, like, sorry, like dead lady's room. Like, sorry to say it like that, but like, I don't, you know, I get her uncomfortableness. But a part of me also was like, you, you could have compromised maybe in sleeping in, on the couch while he slept in there. Like, I don't know. Like, a part of me felt like it was a little selfish of her to feel like she couldn't do one night there. But then again, it's like, I also understand. And the fact of like, for her, it's like, I, this is very uncomfortable for me. Like, sleeping in another, you know, individual's room when they passed away, like, I don't want him trying to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. 
and this heifer staring back at me in the window, uh, in the mirror, like, oh, oh, look, I don't want all that, okay? I asked for that. <laughs> so they agreed to um, go to the hotel and um, uh, come back or whatever. But as of right now, the relationship and everything is very good with the family. She doesn't have any sisters. So, you know, they're, they're meshing really well. Um, and then, you know, um, uh, Mikey is very good with her son. So like I said, y'all, all the couples, Mikey and Chelsea, you know, I can only say I got the most hopes for them out of everybody. So moving on. Um, next couple we have is, um, let's say we have Sheree and Anthony, and then we have, um, I did Melissa and Louie. I did Joy and Red, uh, Mikey and Chelsea, uh, the Sheree and Anthony. I feel like there's one more I'm missing. Am I missing another one? I don't think so. I don't think so. So let's go ahead and talk about Sheree and Anthony and it might pop up if I am missing one along the way. So Sheree and Anthony, Sheree, it's cute at certain angles like uh, I hate to say it that way but like she you gotta find her at the right angle but like she dressed you know so Anthony gets out of course they went straight to the macking boy they were macking okay Anthony he's getting out to seven years for burglary y'all um so um uh that yeah, that's the other couple, um, Brittany and Andy. Oh, yo, I'm, we gonna get into that ass, okay? Oh, yeah, we gonna say nothing for last, because I tell you, that half of Brittany, girl. Andy, you got played. Um, so, yeah, so Sheree and Anthony, you know, they know each other actually from childhood. Um, and they were together, but Anthony back then was cheating on her ass. So, they broke up, he go to prison, now, you know, she is basically, you know, doing what, how, what, I don't know what it is with all these, like, women having these kids and feeling like they want to, like, step daddy their kids so bad to the extent that it's making them blind to the red flags and the way that they're trying to mesh these, you know, situations together. Um, so she tried to give Anthony a chicken his mom had made. He like, I don't want that. And he was like, he was like, respectfully, uh -uh, I want some food. I was like, dad, not even mama's cooking was good enough. So she's like, yes, baby. Like, I'm so excited. Uh, they didn't give the man his clothes, but she got a bunch of clothes for him, everything. He's just excited to be out and get his life started. He wants to go to culinary school. You know, he wants to have a food truck. At least the man has a plan. And of all the inmates, Anthony does seem the most, like, determined uh, with getting his life on right. But Sheree, the way you acting, I kind of feel like it's about to be a lot of head bumping on the way because she talked about, oh, I got an itinerary for you on what's going to happen every day. And the minute she said itinerary in the back of my head, I just heard, rah, rah, rah. like just, just no wrong road, wrong road. Girl, you just picked this man out of prison. There's been nothing but itinerary in his life for the last seven years. That is not what he want right now. So, um, they get in the car. She got alarms ringing all episode. Um, talking about, oh, this is what we supposed to do. We behind. So, they in the car. And all he think about, you know, he's like, I want to eat some food. But I also want to eat that egg, you know. And so, um, they basically talk about what's going on. And she's asking him questions. How you feel, baby? And he's like, I feel good, you know. And she's like, I'm just so excited you're out. And I got everything planned for you. And she's like, it don't sound like he's really like, you know, feeling, you know, too good about my itinerary. And she's like, she's like, I feel, you know, feel some type of way. And she's like, what about he? And he was like, man, you know, it's you. Like, you know, she's like, I love everything to be planned. And you could tell he's trying to hold his tongue about it. But he kind of, you know, was passive aggressive. But she was like, you know, what, what was it like being on the inside? What was the hardest part? And he's like, well, you know, waking up every day, somebody dictating how your life is going. 
you know, they trying to tell you what time and place to be. And she was like, that kind of sounded like it was for me. And he was kind of like, like, girl, this man just got out of prison. Why are you talking about throwing itineraries in this man's face? Am I tripping? Did y'all pick, like, did that make sense to y'all? Like, did, did that not scream red flag? To y'all like the way it did to me like you're not you're you're not picking up what he's putting down ma'am um so first things first get him some food you know when they get out of prison all they thinking about is plates and puss okay that's all they thinking about um so they go get the Popeyes and you know she take and get a haircut uh they ride through town and it don't look like you know what it was when he went away it do but it don't um and so he goes to his barber. Turns out it's the barber that was the last person that cut his hair before he got locked up. They won't let you out, okay? Um, and so he go in. The dude's like, man, good to see you. Um, and he was like, yeah, you know, I knew I knew old aunt was up to something because, I mean, he had no job, but he had money, you know? He's like, I didn't know what he was doing exactly, but I knew it was something. <laughs> so um, um, and he's cutting his hair. And she's outside, basically, like, waiting in the car or whatever. And he's basically giving the download on, you know, how he's so thankful for Sheree. she been there for him. And, you know, anything he's ever asked for, you know, she showed up. And then she in the car, you know, uh, talking about, you know, planning his coming home party. And she's like, you know, I probably, you know, was doing too much and, you know, shouldn't have done it. Because he didn't want it. You can tell Anthony's real low-key, not too showy, but... She's too busy trying to show people my man, my man, my man, especially her ex dude, her baby daddy, because she's like, oh, I want them to talk. You know, I feel like this would be the perfect time for them to talk because, you know, it's in front of people. Um, and also, I just want to see him like watching me and Anthony be happy. See, that's your problem. You worry about your baby daddy. And like, it's very clear, girl, this shit is going to blow up in your face if you keep doing that you trying to pin them against each other, but you also want them to be copacetic for the sake of your son. Like, girl, you need to stop it. This party is about to, is about to be all types of screws, nuts, and bolts thrown into it. Sheree, girl, you need to stop worrying about what your baby because he not worried about you. He not. He's still messing with other girls. He probably was messing with while y'all was together. So you need to let it go. Um... So they're going to see the mama after that. But girl, put the itinerary rate. You're going to chase that man off with these itineraries. He just got to be told what to do every goddamn day. No, that's the last thing he want is another goddamn schedule. Let the man breathe for a couple of days. Like the first day out, you already putting bells in his face and alarms and stuff. Stop it. So last but not least, y'all, the couple, who Brittany and Andy. So Andy come in with a coffee and she got an attitude. <sighs> He like, so what's going on? She's like, Gracie, she's upset. You know, this just isn't, you know, what I expected. She's upset with me. And, you know, I'm just really trying to be there for my daughter. So he's like, well, what you want me to do? And she's like, well, you know, I'm not trying to leave her. And he was like, well, I mean, you know, from the outside looking in, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, we should have been gone. You know, it's, you know, what you said was people, places and things. And he's like, I'm trying to use your words. And she's like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Bitch, if you don't stop playing like you don't know what he's talking about. See, Brittany, you really try to act dumb. Because you know Goodwill Prison, you was talking to that man about getting out. You don't want to go back to, you know, the drug, the drugs. If you know, if you know what I'm talking about, put drop down in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. The drugs, okay? She, you try to avoid the drugs. And... You're trying to do better as a mom. And like he said, you know, let's not face it. Like, you got some guilt. And she, like, she kind of was taken back by it. Like, how dare you? He's like, but this is stuff, like, this isn't something that wasn't said. Like, you are guilty about leaving your daughter. Like, being on drugs. Getting locked up. Like, you said these things. And so, the fact that he's even suggesting. First of all, he wasn't even one that suggested leaving like that. Because you were like, well, I'm not going to leave her, like, I mean, and I don't want you sitting around all day. So what is the person supposed to deduce from that comment? So when he was like, well, okay, cool. She was like, huh. her little last was pissing me off. Every time she, huh. And then he would say something. She's like, and then what? Bitch, if you don't, 
if you don't, I swear to God, the way she was acting. And so she was like reversing everything back on him. And then what, Andy? What you want to do? What is cool supposed to mean? Like you are throwing him for a loop because you sure as hell probably did tell him, you know, I don't want to be in this environment. I want to be healthy, you know. But the problem is she, I don't think she was expecting Gracie to react this way when she got out. And so now that Gracie's having such a big traumatic response, she's feeling guilty for the thought of leaving. She don't want to do it again. And now you have the nerve to sit there and tell Andy, well, I'll let you know where you fit in my life because that, you're supposed to be here to support me. So I'll be with Gracie and I'll just let you know when we need you. Excuse the f*** out of me. So Andy, what it sounds like is she gonna stay right here. You're gonna go to, back home and she'll call you and text you every night, every time she needs some money. Cause that's what I'm getting out of this. And then she got the nerve to be like, oh, he's so different. Why, like, you're an ex-cop talking to uh, cagedwomen.com. I mean, she got a point right there. But you had every opportunity to cut it off. But you want to use the excuse of, uh, well, did I, you know, uh, forge a friendship and, you know, take it to a relationship? Yeah. But now he's just being a dickhead. And it's like, no, you're looking for a reason to, to, to drop him. First of all, you ain't really attracted to him like that. Let's be for real. Two, you knew that you were going to get a situation like some benefits out of this as well Brittany like let's stop let's stop the cap now let's stop it so Brittany you got out you now realize you got this man that's willing to give you everything but now you got to follow up on this plan that you told him and now you're trying to backpedal a coochie pop and it just don't work that way you don't get to tell somebody I'll let you know when we need you the fuck ma'am so, uh, she leaves, like, she get in the car with Gracie because she's like, I'm not leaving. I should have listened to his daughters. Like, his daughters tried to tell me, you want me to leave Gracie in a time like this? And it's like, ma'am, you knew this was going to happen. But like I said, I think Gracie gave her that big, re that reaction that she had. And now she's feeling shitty about it. So, Andy, he's on the phone with his friend, like, yo, like, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And the friend's just like, mm. And even the son was like, it had the same response where he was like, man, she just left. And I guess we just go, you know, wait for her to call. He's like, she ain't said nothing. And he's like, no. Nah. And the son was like, mm. Everybody had the same response of, nigga, we tried to tell you. Like, we tried to tell you, bro. So the brother calls the sister and was like, girl, you might have been right. Like, because cause she gone with her daughter and we don't know where she went. She got a brand new phone and $500. That is a recipe for disaster with the addict. Like, a recipe for disaster. And then she didn't have the nerve to tell this man where she was going. Like, Andy. He talking about, like, I don't know if she left for good. Like, no, nah, she gonna call you back when she needs something. But for right now, she gone for good right now. Um, Yeah, Andy, you might have got played, sir. You, you. And so the brother was like, well, what's the, what happens if, you know, she don't come back? He's like, well, you know, I just look like the fool and it's just going to be a life lesson. Boy, tough titties for Andy. Andy's coming. Brittany said, Andy's coming. <laughs> I don't want to be here no more. No, 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 no. I don't want to be here no more. So that was five after lockup or not. Yeah, love after lockup. Yeah, this is love after lockup, y'all. So y'all tell me what you feel about each of these couples, breakdown of everybody. You guys feel like Andy getting played. You guys feel like, um... Louie's going to make it to New Jersey or nah. Do you guys feel like uh, Red's going to get out and be faithful to Joy? Um, and what you guys think about Sheree and these itinerary plans for, for Anthony? Do you think that's going to go over well with him? I really appreciate you for tuning in. Y'all make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter, and I will catch you guys next time. Deuces.